morning we're going to be tying up a clink hammer which is in a merger pattern um, with a lot of use and experience so this is a good one to turn to when you're fishing emergers. I'm just starting out with a, a hook that's like a clink hammer hook. I'm using some Vivas GSP in black. My hook size is a size 16. So I've gone down a little ways down the shank of the hook and then I've come back about halfway and from here we're going to tie in our parachute. For the parachute we're just going to use some McFlylon in white. Um, you can use other wing material that you might have. Zelon, um, calf tail, calf body fur, any of those. I like to wax my thread up, which I've already done, just to help grip this material that we're tying in a little bit better. I want to tie this on the top of the hook with a decent amount going over the top of the eye. So I'm going to work on getting that secured right on top. And once I do, I'm going to take a couple of wraps back and just trying to make sure everything's in place. I'm just going to kind of wiggle it back and forth. And then I'm going to continue taking these tighter wraps. And we're just going to go part of the way down here. With that, we're going to go ahead and cut this butt end off and I like to just hold it up straight up and then try to cut on an angle. From here I'm just going to continue on back down towards the bend of the hook taking just some careful wraps getting my thread onto the hook then I'm going to come back up through that material and I'm going to take a look at where that wing is sitting. That's sitting a little further back than I would want so I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to kind of get it where I want. So I just don't want quite that much space behind the eye of the hook. So I'm just going to take a few kind of open wraps just to kind of get my measurement. And that right there, that's going to do me fine. I'm going to pull that wing backwards and we're going to take some jam wraps right under that wing, that parachute. I'll just help it begin to stand up. And I'm just going to come right back behind it. Kind of fill in a little bit. So from here we're going to just kind of work a little bit on taper. So I'm going to work my way down around the bend of the hook. And with a clink hammer you want to take this pretty deep. So I am going to go fairly deep. And I'm going to go that far now. I'm not overly concerned with touching wraps here because I'm going to be wrapping back over all of this. Plus we'll have dubbing going over it. But I do want to make sure I get it deep enough in the bend. So we're going to take it just about to the hook bend. Which is going to be more down here in this area. And with that we'll just kind of work on the taper a little bit. We're going to want to dub this body really tight, so I'm turning to my tried and true super fine. Um, I try to give this a little bit of a variegated look. You can change the color of the body depending on what kind of um, bugs you're, you're after, but I use kind of the Hendrickson plus a tiny little bit of brown to try to create a bit of a variegated look. So I'll take the brown a tiny bit less brown than the, the tanner color going to lay them on top of one another and then I'm just going to break it apart a couple of times and with that we'll just go ahead and kind of spread this out so that we're ready to dub it onto our thread. I'll go ahead and take that nice little wisp of dubbing get our thread just go ahead and dub that on get it started anyway I'll slide that on down a little ways. A little speck of something there that I don't like. So 
I've got some bare thread there, which is fine because I want to travel all the way back down to the where we left off the thread near the bend of the hook. See, we've got a little piece of dubbing caught there, but we can trim that out. So right about there, I'm just going to tighten that dubbing up just by spinning it here. I'll be doing that all the way up with each turn. It's going to give it a little bit of a ribbed look to it. And sometimes having a little bit of gap in between these wraps and letting that black thread show through will just enhance the look of that potential ribbing. That's about as far as I want to take this, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pull some of that dubbing off of my thread here. With that pulled off, I'm just going to tie it basically over the top of it. Now I'll just come in with my scissors and trim off that extra dubbing. From here we're just going to go ahead and work our way back up to right behind where our parachute is. Once I get right up there behind it, we're going to post that parachute up by taking wraps around the, the post, the parachute, not around the hook. And at times that can be a bit of a fight, but you'll get it worked out. For me it works a little bit better if I can kind of grab hold of that post and hold it up as I'm taking these wraps. I'll hold it a little bit looser as I go around again. And those wraps are kind of sliding down on themselves which is just fine. And I'll build that post up a little bit more when we tie on our hackle feather. So right now I'm just going to focus on wrapping back down to the base. I'll make that post a little bit sturdier. So we're just going right back down. And that will help us create a nice solid post to tie our hackle around. So once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and move up in front of that a little bit. I'm going to want to start building up a little bit more bulk right in front of the, the parachute here. And then we're going to take our thread right back until it's right on the back side. For my hackle I'm just going to use a nice dark ginger hackle. I want to tie it in so that the curve of the feather is facing inwards towards that post. I want a little bit of length on this, maybe not quite that much, but I'm going to take that first wrap here and I'm going to take this next wrap crosswise over and behind and that's how we're going to secure this down. I'll take a look at the length on that stem and I'm actually going to shorten it just a hair, not too much. And I'll just take another wrap behind that to secure that in place. I'm going to start wrapping now over the top of it towards the back front end, I guess, of our parachute. You'll see that stem starts to bend forward, which is exactly what we want it to do. Go ahead and turn my vise, bring out my scissors, and we'll cut off that extra. So from here we're just going to take our thread back behind our post and we're going to work on securing this packle to the post itself. 
So when we finish off the fly, we're going to actually be spinning our hackle around the parachute rather than around the shank of the hook. And just be patient with yourself because sometimes this can be a little bit of a delicate process. Especially when you don't have thread control, like I don't right at the moment. That's getting about as high as I want that post to go. I did go up a little bit higher. So from here I'm just going to work on moving my way back down. It's going to help make that post more durable. Much easier to tie this hackle around. And I want to take that all the way down to the base, the bottom. So now we've got our parachute post and we've got our hackle actually tied up against the post. I'm going to use about four peacock curls up by the eye of the peacock. I've got those here. I'm going to go ahead and clip the tips of these off. Turn that around. And then we'll just go ahead and lay these on the side. I'm not overly concerned that they're on the top of the shank of the hook here because we're just going to be wrapping this. So the length is long, which is fine. I'll just pull those back until they clear the eye. And I don't want to crank down on this too hard, especially back here, especially using GSP. The gel spun is almost unbreakable, but it'll also cut right through your material. And the stems on these peacock curls are fairly delicate. So then we'll just go ahead and move forward and clean up the butt ends. I'm going to go ahead and move my bobbin cradle into place and get my thread kind of out of my working area. And I'm going to grab these three and I'm going to be very careful with them. And towards the tip I'm just going to take them in my fingers and I'm going to spin them around. And that's just going to help us create a, a little bit beefier uh, peacock curl. Also help us keep those fibers from coming apart. You can see I already lost one, which is why I tie in four. If I get down to one, then it's time to tie in another one. I'm just going to take touching wraps up to behind the post. Then I'm going to go ahead and transition to in front of the post, and I may even pull this stuff back a little bit just so I can get it in nice and tight. That's probably about as far as I want it to go, so we'll go ahead and take our thread off of our bobbin cradle and get that cradle out of the way. I want to keep the tension on these, but not too tight or they'll break right off. I'm going to try to work my way through some of those little fibers there. I'll just take a couple of wraps behind those curls. Get rid of that one. I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to tie this side off. We're going to have a little bit of a black head here with our black thread. Once you've got those tied in, you can cut them off, um, but if you've got them tight enough, you can actually just take them and break them off, which kind of like when you helicopter your wire, um, it just breaks them off really nice and close and clean, which is what I'm looking for. Go ahead and take a few more wraps, trying to capture some of those remaining fibers that are sticking out, and then we'll just give this a nice whip finish. So when you wet finish, you want to move from the eye backwards so you have more of a th width towards the bend of the hook. And then I'm just going to go ahead and release that right off. We'll go ahead and trim our thread. 
So now we're at this point, I'm going to reposition my hook again. And what I'm looking for is to get that post to be kind of perpendicular to my surface here. It'll just make things easier to tie on. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. I'll take a look at that. I want it just a little higher, right about there. And hopefully you can see kind of what we've got there. We did remove our thread and that was on purpose. So we're gonna move right back to our GSP. We're gonna start tying right around the base and we're gonna work our way up the post. And all we're doing here, it's almost like starting a new fly. We're just securing our thread again to our hook, but we're actually securing it to the post instead of the hook itself. I'll just go ahead and take my thread cutter here. We'll go ahead and remove that thread. So when it comes to the hackle, you want to make sure you don't skimp. Um, you don't want to use like a, a hackle gauge and pick a size 16. I actually want this to be um, much wider. That's one place that I always mess up when I'm doing a parachute is going with a hackle that's too small. Then it just looks weird. You don't want a fly to look weird. You want it to look good. So for the first couple of wraps, I want to keep it tight. I actually want to keep it tight all the way through. But my first few wraps, I'll probably hold onto the post like this. I just want one wrap right in front of the, the last wrap. As we start moving down this, if you let up the tension on this at all, then it's all just going to come unwrapped. I'm just going to go ahead and take touching turns moving down our post trying to make sure those stay touching wraps so that they're not capturing a bunch of fibers. Once I'm to about there, I'm going to go ahead and release my thread. And we're going to go ahead and tie this piece of hackle off. So I'm going to kind of wiggle my way through these fibers here. I don't want them to be trapped downwards. I want them to be as upward as I can get them. I may have to pick a few of those out. So I've got a couple of wraps there. I'm going to do the same thing here. And with those wraps in place I can go ahead and turn my hook a little ways so I can get right in at the stem of this hackle feather and try not to clip off any of those fibers. They're Precious. I'm like Gollum. There we go. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra thread so we can whip finish right here on the post. After that, I'm going to go ahead and move it straight back up again where it's supposed to be. So again, I'm going to be really careful with these whip finishes to try to not capture too many fibers that I have to pick out. And once I've got a couple of good wraps on that, I'm going to go ahead and release it. I'll just go ahead and let that out like that. Go ahead and trim our thread off. So we're back. We're going to take our final step and that's going to be to trim the parachute. The trick here, if there is a trick, is to make sure you don't cut it too short. Um, if you cut it long, you can shorten it. If you cut it short, it's really hard to add those fibers back in. And with that, you have your completed clink hammer. Um, really good go-to fly. Um, it's been around for forever. Um, change up the dubbing color if you want to change the color of the bug to match better what might be hatching on your waters it's probably best to tie up a few different colors so you have them available as well as different sizes so throw yourself a hook in your vise and give this one a shot